tenses are time-related expressions such as I have done my homework, I will do my homework, or I have been doing my homework. There are 12 kinds of tenses and this video will briefly explain all of them and tell you how the tense system works in general. We also have videos explaining each of these tenses in detail, so check out the links below after this video. Anyway, let's begin. Before we start learning tenses, we must understand what a present participle, also known as the ing form of a verb, is, and what a past participle, also known as pp, is. They're important because in a minute, you're going to hear a lot of stuff that sounds like b plus ing or have plus pp. So, what are the present and past participles? Every verb in English can be made into a present participle or a past participle. These participles are used to express certain tenses and the dictionary tells us how to make them. Present participles, also known as the ing form of the verb, are the ones you make by adding ing after the verb, as in eat to eating, write to writing. Later in the video, you'll hear b plus ing. It means to put the b verb in front of the original verb you have and change the original verb into its ing form. For example, let's change the sentence I finished my homework into b plus ing form. First, insert b in front of the original of verb finish. Next, change B's form according to your subject. Since the subject is I, change B into M. Refer to this chart if you are not sure how to change the verb B. Secondly, change the original verb finish into its ing form finishing. And you have the sentence, I am finishing my homework. Moving on, past participles, also known as PP, are the ones you usually make by adding ED or EN after the verb, as in kick, to kicked or eat to eaten. However, many past participles do not follow this rule as in shoot to shot. So the only way to make sure is to check the dictionary. Later in the video, you'll hear have or has plus pp. What it means is to put have or has in front of the original verb you have and change the original verb into its pp form. Let's say we want to change the sentence I finish homework into have or has plus pp form. First, put have or has in front of the verb finish. If your subject is I, you, we, they, or something plural like people, keep have. If your subject is he, she, it, Tom, or something singular like a person, keep has. Since the subject is I in this sentence, I will keep have. Secondly, change the original verb finish into its pp form finished and we're done. I'll explain more about participles later in this video, but for now, this will be enough to start learning tenses. Because tenses are such a difficult topic, I'll explain it two times. One time focusing on each tense's meaning and the other time focusing on each tense's form. Let's begin. Tenses are created by using the following four pieces of meaning in the past, present, and future time zone. Let's look at each of the pieces. The first piece is called the simple tense. It means something happens and there's nothing special about it. If something happened in the past and there's nothing special about it, it is called the simple past tense. If something happens in the present and there's nothing special about it, it is called the simple present tense. If something happens in the future and there's nothing special about it, it is called the simple future tense. The second piece of meaning is called the perfect tense. It means that an action happens before another action. If in the past an action happened before another action, it is called the past perfect tense. If in the future an action happens before another action, it is called the future perfect tense. The present perfect tense is a bit special, so I'll deal with it later. Anyway, you get the idea. Moving on, the third piece of meaning is called the continuous tense. This tense is also called the progressive tense. It means that an action is ongoing, unfinished at a given point in time. So, for instance, if an action was ongoing, unfinished at a past point in time, it is called the past continuous tense. The same applies to the present and future. The last piece of meaning is called the perfect continuous tense. It means that an action starts before another action and continues until that other action happens. If in the past an action happens before another action and continues until that other action happens, it is past perfect continuous tense. The same applies to the present and future. 
Now, there are 12 tenses in total because each of the past, present, future time zone has all the four pieces of meaning available. Don't worry if this sounds too difficult because now I'm gonna explain each of these tenses in more detail. Out of the three time zones, let's start with the past time zone. If something happened at a past point in time and there's nothing special about it, use the past form of verbs as in I ate an apple. This tense is called the simple past tense. Next, if you're talking talking about something that was ongoing, unfinished, at a past point in time, put was or were in the ing form of a verb. For example, I was eating an apple at 3 p.m. This tense is called the past continuous tense. Moving on, if you're talking about a past action that happened before another past action, put had in the pp form of a verb. Take for example, we had eaten an apple before Jason came home with some food. In this case, Jason's coming home with some food is a past action and the apple eating happened before that past action. This tense is called the past perfect tense. Next, if you're talking about a past action that started happening before another past action and continued up to the other past action, put had been in the ing form of a verb. For instance, we had been eating an apple when Jason came home with some food. In this case, Jason's coming home with some food is a past action and the apple eating started before that action and continued until that action. This tense is called the past perfect continuous tense. Now, let's move on to the tenses in the present time zone. If something happens in the present and there is nothing special about it, leave the verb in its present form as in he eats an apple. This tense is called the simple present tense. You also use the simple present tense when there is no point in choosing a tense. There is no point in choosing a tense if something held true in the past holds true now and will always hold true in the future. For instance, some scientific truth such as water boiling at 100 degrees Celsius were always true in the past, are true now, and will always be true in the future. In such cases, there's no point in choosing a tense, so use the simple present tense as in water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Another instance is someone's habit. Habits are what someone frequently did in the past, does now, and will frequently do in the future. So in such cases, use the simple present tense as in he bites his fingernails. One more instance is the permanent conditions of someone or something. For instance, the human race in general had four limbs in the past, has four limbs now, and will always have four limbs in the future. Hence, use the simple present tense to say the human race has four limbs. For more information, check out the video on the simple present tense. To move on, if you're talking about something that is ongoing, unfinished at the present moment, put am or is or are and add the ing form of a verb, as in I am eating an apple. This tense is called the present continuous tense. Moving on, if something that happened in the past still has relevance in the present moment, put has or have in the pp form of a verb, as in I have lost my wallet. This tense is called the present perfect tense. What does having relevance in the present moment mean exactly? Usually, it means the following situations. First, when an action started in the past and continued up to the present moment. In that case, the present perfect tense is usually followed by phrases such as since plus time or for plus duration. For instance, if you say I have lived in LA since 1980, you mean you started living in LA in 1980 and continue to live there until now. If you say I have been a soldier for 10 years, it means you became a soldier 10 years ago and did not change your job ever since. Secondly, a past action is still relevant in the present if the result of the action still holds true now. For instance, if you say I have lost my wallet, you mean that you lost your wallet in the past and still don't have it now. In addition, if someone asks you where Amy is and you say Amy has gone to Brazil, you mean Amy went to Brazil and she's still in Brazil now. There are more to the present perfect tense, so please check out the video on that tense. Next, when something started in the past and continued up to the present moment, put have or has been and add the ing form of a verb, as in I have been studying German for five years. This tense is called the present perfect continuous tense. Now, let's talk about the 
the future category. If something is going to happen in the future and there is nothing special about it, use the simple future tense. There are a number of ways to express the simple future tense. Basically, if you use the simple present tense with any word that points to a future time, it is the simple future tense. Let me show you the most frequent ways to express the simple future tense. The first way is to put will and put a verb in its base form, as in I will go to school. The second way is to have be going to and put a verb in its base form. An example will be I am going to go to school. Remember, the word be needs to change its form depending on the subject. The third way is to just use the simple present tense with some words pointing at a future time. For example, the plane arrives at 5.30 tomorrow. The verb arrives is in the simple present tense, but since the word tomorrow points to a future time, this is a perfectly fine simple future tense. There are many other ways, so please check out the video on the simple future tense. Moving on, if something will be ongoing, unfinished, at a future point in time, put will be and add ing form of a verb, as in I will be eating an apple for dinner tomorrow. This tense is called the future continuous tense. Next, if you are talking about a future action that'll happen before another future action, put will have and add a verb in its pp form. For instance, I will have reached 40 before my daughter graduates. This tense is called the future perfect tense. Lastly, if you are talking about a future action that started happening before another future action and continued until the other future action, put will have been in the ing form of a verb. An example sentence will be I will have been studying German for 10 years by the time I graduate. This tense is called the future perfect continuous tense. Alright, that's everything for the meaning of 12 tenses. Now, let's talk more about the forms of 12 tenses. Because different tenses use different parts within the predicate verb, we need to understand what a predicate verb is and what's inside a predicate verb. What is a predicate verb? Every English sentence must have a subject and a predicate verb. Subject is the who or what in a sentence, like Tom, a cat, the fact that I am healthy. The predicate verb is the information on that who or what. For instance, laughs, eats a fish, or is amazing are predicate verbs. A predicate verb has two large parts within itself. One is the auxiliary verb phrase and the other is the verb phrase. The auxiliary verb phrase has three parts inside, which are the models, the perfect, and the continuous. All of them are optional. On the other hand, the verb phrase has one part, the verb, and this part is mandatory. Let's talk about what each part does, starting with the models. Models are words such as will, would, must, can, could, may, might, should, and etc. Although their primary function is to express possibility and obligation, the word will expresses future tenses. Please put will in the models if the sentence is in future tenses, take it off if it's in the present or past tenses. Next, the perfect is for perfect tenses. Put have or has plus pp or had plus pp. The pp here means that the verb coming after have or has or had has to be in its pp form. For instance, if I want to change the sentence I I eat into the present perfect tense, I must put have plus pp in the perfect. And since the verb eat comes right after the word have, change eat into its pp form eaten. Moving on, the continuous is for continuous tenses. Put am or is or are plus ing or was or were plus ing. The ing here means that the verb that comes after am or is or are or was or were has to be in its ing form. For for example, if I want to change the sentence I eat into the present continuous tense, I must put M plus ing in the continuous. Since the verb eat comes right after the verb M, change it into its ing form eating. Lastly, let's talk about the verb. There are two types to the verb and you have to choose one between the two. The first type is called the main verb. It expresses actions as in I cry or the cat eats a fish. The other type is called the linking verb. It introduces conditions instead of actions, as in am, became, or seems. If you are using a linking verb, you must put an adjective after the verb to explain the condition, as in tired, read, or interesting. 
The reason why I tell you this is that receiving an action is also considered a condition, and such conditions require a special verb form, which many people confuse with tenses. The condition of receiving an action is called the passive voice. To use the passive voice, we must put be in the verb and put the pp form of a verb in the adjective position. For instance, let's say an apple is receiving a washing action. If so, you say an apple is washed. The word is is a be verb and washed is the pp of the verb wash. You may say, wait a minute, I thought pp's are only used for tenses. No, actually, pp's perform many functions and one of them is to function as an adjective. Anyway, be aware that the pp used in passive voice has nothing to do with tenses. For instance, in these sentences, the underlined part is a passive voice, not a tense. This will become clearer to you in a minute. Now, let's see what happens if I stack together all the parts within the predicate verb. Let me show you by analyzing the example phrase, the journal will have been being written. The phrase is in the future perfect continuous tense with the passive voice. First, because the phrase is in the future tense, put will in the models. Next, since the phrase has a perfect tense, put have plus pp in the perfect. Next, since it has a continuous tense, put b plus ing in the continuous. Be careful, since the word b comes right after have, it has to change into its pp form bin. Next is the passive voice. Since the journal is receiving the action of writing, put b plus pp in the verb, as in is written. Be careful, since the word is comes right after bin, it has to change into its ing form being. And that is how we got the phrase, the journal will have been being written. Of course, there are multiple different combinations for stacking the parts inside the predicate verb. The possible combinations are as follows. Okay, now we're at the last part of this chapter, and this part is very important. You only mark the present or past form one time for an entire predicate verb, and you mark it on the first element of the predicate verb. The rest of the elements are in either the present form or participle forms. Here's what I mean. Take the example phrase, the journal will have been being written. The first element of the predicate verb is will. So here, you have the option to choose either to put the present form will or the past form would. The rest of the parts must always be in either the present form or participles. Have is in the present form. Been is a past participle. Being is a present participle. And written is not a part of the predicate verb, it is a passive voice. In this sentence, if you put anything other than the word will in the past form, it'll be wrong. For instance, if you say the journal will have been being written, it is wrong. You may ask, what about past tenses? Don't they have a lot of past forms? No. If you look at them closely, all of them follow the rules I just told you. For instance, take a look at the simple past tense, as in the journal was written. The verb be is the only, therefore the first element in the predicate verb. Hence, you may use the past tense was. Other than that, there's no past form for the rest of the elements. Here's another sentence. Take the past perfect tense, as in the journal had been written by Sunday afternoon. The auxiliary verb have is the first element in the predicate verb. Hence, it can be written in its past form had. The rest of the words are in either the present form or participles. The same applies to all other tenses. Great, this is the end of beginner's lessons on the tense system. If you are interested in distinguishing things that look like tenses but are actually not tenses, as in, if I were a bird, I would fly away, if I had done my homework, I would not have been in trouble, or I was wondering if I could see the school principal, then check out this video. If you want to know more about each tenses, please check out the links below. If you have any questions, ask me in the comment section. It was nice having you, and goodbye.